just announced you're the lactose intolerant vegetarian. <laughs> Like you're a mainstream comedian at Cabaret Night who's just denied you another burlesque act. <laughs> you wouldn't want to see it. You wouldn't want to see it. Um, <laughs> but you do a lot of gigs in proper rough pubs as well in the West Country. I did a gig just outside Bristol earlier this year. And there was a girl stood at the bar in a, a crop top and leggings. And in the grime in her lower back. <laughs> A builder had written, I wish my van was this dirty. <laughs> it's not true, but it was rough. It was rough, right? And, and they had their toilets in a shed in the pub beer garden, right? Uh, I needed a toilet, but there was two men stood directly outside the toilet doors. And these were scary looking men, the sort of men I would usually cross the street to avoid. The sort of men, like this man sat in the middle over here, right? <laughs> Who's got no hair, not because he's gone bald, just because he finds the very idea of hair intrinsically homosexual. <laughs> Suddenly this has arrived in his life, right? <laughs> Mincing towards him like a camp wolverine. <laughs> it's an odd look, I appreciate that. I've got, I've got the hair of someone from a boy band with the facial hair and eyes of someone you'd see on a crime watch reconstruction. <laughs> You can see that face running across a moor with a hammer, can't you? Like, I'm not that man, I'm not a confrontational man. I often get heckled with Jedward. I don't see it myself. I, if anything, I'm Jedward in ten years' time when they've come out of the limelight and they've been discovered living in a bedsit and one of them's had to eat the other one to survive. <laughs> Maybe. I, I told that joke the other week, right, and I got some genuine Twitter abuse from Jedward fans, right? They, um, they, 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 I did. They, they tweeted me and said, you'll never have fans as Jepic. <laughs> Wait for it. As Jepic or as Jedicated. <laughs> As the Jed heads. I said, like, good. <laughs> they sound like a bunch of jucking jumps. <laughs> <laughs> but I needed the toilet. I need guys who stood directly in front of the toilet door. But I need to go. So I just made my way towards them confidently, assuming that they would part when I reached them. But no such luck, right? Got to the point when I reached them, I had to shuffle between them sideways like this. <laughs> And then as I got face to face with this man, he met my gaze and without blinking, he said to me one of the most confusing opening lines I've ever had from a stranger, right? He said, don't mind us mates. <laughs> it's the boys inside you want to worry about. <laughs> now you do not want to hear that when you're entering a new toilet for the first time. You should have listened to him though, right? Because when I got inside, there was two lads so drunk that one of them had taken off his trousers and pants and was being convinced by his friends to see what would happen if you dropped your cock and balls into the top of a Dyson Airblade. <laughs> it's like the very best opening scene to an episode of Casualty. <laughs> Maybe even a new trick, guys. <laughs> yeah. But um, what was really weird is they did, just didn't acknowledge me entering the room. He just stood there psyching himself out. I went and used the urinal. And then as I left, his mate tutted at me and went, didn't wash his hands. <laughs> as if I was the weird one in this situation. Um, it's, uh, it's been really lovely up here. I've really enjoyed it. But uh, anyone ever been to the West Country? Yeah. A few of you, please keep coming. Um, we need your money. We need your money. Too. It's, it's a lovely part of the world, though. Now, something that sums up how, what a lovely part of the world it is is the headline we had on our local newspaper a couple of weeks before I came up here. Right, a headline that simply read: "Cabbage attack <laughs> on bus driver." <laughs> Serious stuff, guys. Come on. A bus driver from Somerset was left badly shaken and suffering minor facial injuries after he was pelted with cabbages and tomatoes. Now, I've... I don't know what goes on in the cities, but I imagine it's not this. I've seen Ross Kemp on gangs, right? 
<laughs> and our gangs aren't like that. Our gangs are down their local allotments, <laughs> literally having turf wars. <laughs> Hey, blood. What are you doing on my patch? <laughs> I don't think this is your patch, brother. It ain't got your name on it. <laughs> well, yes, it has, actually. Somerset Alarm Society. Plot 9B. <laughs> Brett Cooper. <laughs> so I suggest you better jog on, bruv. Because i got a casserole pack in my bag. <laughs> And I ain't afraid to use it. <laughs> now at this stage in proceedings, I imagine things get a little bit tense. This guy's mates are getting nervous. They're saying, leave this babe, this ain't worth it. I do not think this man is bluffing. <laughs> I've seen this kind of shit on Country File. <laughs> now Barry's got a carrot, and Stuart's got a leek. <laughs> but if this guy means what he says he means, he could be packing a turnip in there. <laughs> And I don't want to add any fuel to this fire, but I've heard some pretty strong rumours he has teabagged a Dyson Airblade. <laughs> this man knows no fear. And that's why the West Country is great, because in London, they have that knife and gun amnesty to control that gang crime. In the southwest of England, all we have to do is hold a harvest festival. <laughs> That's what the West Country's great. Like, I, I, don't know, I don't know what it's like up in Edinburgh, but I imagine you don't have headlines like cabbage attack on bus driver. It's probably things like dad stabs son for failing to tidy up. <laughs> is that fair, locals? No? Um, it is fair, because there's the Edinburgh in the news. There's the headline, dad stabs son for failing to tidy up.